draw your attention to the screen. That's 22 seconds and at least 75 rounds that was fired. That's something that you see or hear on nightly news with uh, what's going on between Israel and Hamas, but this is right here in Richland County. We're going to run it again, but I want you to direct your attention to this group over here. You'll see an individual that's got a long gun. You'll see three people with guns, and you'll see three cars parked at Medley's property. That's Team A. I'm going to show you Team B now. All right, this is a closer up of them. The three vehicles involved. That's the individual with the, with the long gun. This. All of these individuals have guns and they're shooting. All right, this is a. Another team that's meeting up before, and they they all got guns too. All right, that's that's the crowd. That's another team. This is what our communities are being exposed to. This is what our young people are involved in. I've stood up here many times and talked about kids with guns. These are all kids, and these are guns. And this is why our community is living in terror right now because of individuals like this that are just indiscriminately just shooting. Now, you heard automatic weapons being fired. There's numerous guns that are being fired. Different calibers were found. We found at least 75 shell casings so far, and that's probably not all of them. But that was 22 seconds of just continuously fired. Um, the guns they're using, um, this is one of the guns that we recovered. Now, that is an extended magazine, which means it's long, really not made for that gun, but it can be used for that gun. This was a gun that we recovered, but these are extended magazines that we're seeing that these young people are getting into guns. Now, you may have not ever heard it, it's called a Glock switch. This Glock switch does not come on these guns, it does not come on the Glocks. These are being illegally made, and they're being placed on Glock pistols. And what it does is it will take a pistol that will shoot only every time you pull the trigger, but this switch will allow you pull the trigger one time 
and every bullet in this gun in this magazine will shoot without stopping. Now, those of us who are trained to shoot automatic weapons, we cannot hold a gun that's on the lock switch with extended magazine. We can't even hold it on a target. And that's with two hands. These individuals are doing it one hand, and this is what's going on. This is what we're talking about, the spraying. This is what we're seeing. This is what these young people are getting. Now, this chaos was centered around the swimming pool, which most of the people that were there do not live in that complex, which is a problem for that complex that's allowed just it to be a, a community pool and not a community that lives there, just everybody comes. I fought parents that allowed their children to be there, the young people, those teenagers. You know, there's some responsibility that lies in with parents that will take their children, young teenagers, drop them off somewhere and let them be babysat by the swimming pool, and this is what we happened. This is the second shooting that we've had at this pool. A year ago, we had an individual that was shot and killed. We've made two arrests in that case. You've got three different teams, Team A, Team B, and Team C, that are running around the Northeast Columbia that are doing stuff like this. Um, we've had two shootings at the Falls community that in some way is going to be related to these shootings here. Now, our deputies responded so quickly the other night that they actually saw one of the individuals with a gun running. Um, we'll put his picture up. 17 years old, he is running with this gun that I just showed you. This is the gun that he had in his hand as he was running away from the scene. This gun had just been fired. Our deputies chased him down on foot and was able to catch him and catch him with this gun. This is one of the guns. We've also made another arrest this morning. So we have two arrests and we've recovered three guns. You know, this community was very lucky. We had one individual that was shot, a 16-year-old was shot. Um, Non-life-threatening injuries at this point, but only by the grace of God that we have not had so many people killed because of individuals that you just saw up there with guns like this, with assault rifles, that are just going into community and just spraying bullets all over the place. Um, I've stood up here too many times and said, "Enough is enough," but enough is enough. Yeah, this has got to be a joint effort between the community and parents and the sheriff's department. This is not just a sheriff's department issue. We're going to do our job. We're going to be kicking doors in and we're going to be locking people up. We've already demonstrated that. We are continuing to make arrests and we are going to make an arrest. But something else has got to happen. Parents have got to get involved in it. You know, the community has got to get more involved in it. If a community sees 75 to 100 kids at a pool and they know they don't live in that community, somebody needs to be calling the sheriff's department and get us over there quickly. Every community needs to have a community association, neighborhood watch, crime watch, whatever you want to call it. Communities have got to start looking out for each other even more than what they're doing now. They need to be organized. Parents, if you got a teenager, go search their room, go search their car, go search their backpack, Find the guns that they've got. That's your responsibility. Because if you don't, then your son may end up being the picture, that next picture I show up here, or your son or your daughter may be the one that I'm talking about who's dead because of these kids with these guns. Now, we're now we're close to finish this investigation. I thought it was important this morning to give an update on where we're at. We're also asking that the community help us out even more. I only showed you two videos, uh, a lot of videos that we've got. We need more videos. They're helping out tremendously. If we can put the map up, this area here, we're asking anybody who lives on Longtown Road, Lake Village Drive, all these areas that you see, if you've got a ring camera, surveillance camera, um, contact us. Let, us. let us look at your footage that you've got. Um, 
we won't put you in danger, we won't put you in jeopardy, but you know, you, you've got to help us. you got to help the community. This is your community. You may not live right there where that shooting happened the other day. You may live somewhere else, but it happened there the other day. It could happen over here. It's your house the next day. So everybody needs to be concerned about this. This has got, this has got to stop. We're going to, we're going to put them in jail. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can to, to keep them in jail. We're talking about 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 18 years old that are running around here with assault rifles, with stolen guns. And this gun here was stolen. This, this is a stolen gun. Nobody, you know, the man that we caught, young man we caught with it, didn't go by to the store and buy it. it it's a stolen gun that he got his hands on, you know. We got to get the hands, the guns out of the hands of these young people, and to do that is don't leave them in your vehicle. The vehicle's not a holster. Don't leave your gun in it. Yeah, but we're continuously seeing that. So, you know, the update is is we've made two arrests. We're going to be making more arrests. We're going to have everybody responsible. This brings back the horror of what happened last year after a prom party at Metal Lakes Park. The amount of bullets that were shot, the terror. You see these kids running. The terror, not only in those kids that are there, but the people who are home. This is their homes. And you got bullets coming through the walls. Last week, we convicted a man of doing a drive by shooting where an older man was in his bed sleeping. And this. This individual did a drive-by shooting and shot the man in his bed and killed him. He got convicted, and he got life. Yeah. Again, only by the grace of God, I'm not standing up here talking about that we've got 15 or 20 people dead. It's not because they didn't try. Questions? Sure. I mean, defense lawyers will say, you know, they're young, they're kids, and, you know, we've seen many times these kids just get a slap on the wrist. Do you have any word to anybody prosecuting? Yeah, this go back to that first video. That individual you see running around there with that assault rifle that is just shooting all over the place, that ain't a kid. That is not an innocent kid. That is a hoodlum. That is a monster. That's somebody who's got a gun, and he does not care. That is an adult decision he's making, and they're going to be charged as an adult. The 17-year-old we caught running away with a gun is charged as an adult. They're going to be held as an adult. This is what we need to look at. We don't look, need to look at them when they all cleaned up and got a nice suit on and Mama's standing there crying because he's a good boy. Where was Mama and Daddy at when he's out here doing this? Where are they at? Okay? So the community needs to see this. They don't need to see when they're all dressed up and cleaned and somebody's crying over them because it's too late because a parent didn't do what they needed to do. Somebody, some parent should have found that gun. Some parent should know where their child's at and what they're doing. So that's what I say to the defense attorney. With summer having just begun and, you know, we having this shooting, kids are bored, unsupervised, outside of school. Is there any concern that we're going to see a lot of this this summer? I don't know. I'm just praying that we don't. This, is a, this, is, you know, this isn't the first one we had. You know, the, the two shootings that we've had at the Falls community has happened in the last probably two months. So... This is a pattern we're seeing all over. Though. It's not just Richland County. This is a nationwide problem. I'm not worried about somewhere else in L.A. or Chicago. I'm worried about what's going on in Richland County and what we're going to do as a community to stop it. Sheriff, do you believe this to be gang-related? There's gang involvement in this, yes. There's, you know, when you have a group, you know, again, you've got to be careful on how you define a gang. When you have a group of young people who have got guns, who are all, you know, protecting their group, that's a gang. I mean, you don't, they don't have to have any particular names. We don't go by the major gang names. They go by neighborhood names. These, 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 these hoodlum kids all know each other, and they all band together, and this is what they do. You saw them all standing around the white car. How many of them are standing there? Yeah, that's a gang. You see these, at least these three right here, they're all together. You know, that's, that's planned. How they got the cars parked, what they're doing, that's, that's planned. This is a plan. What is the department doing this summer to keep gun violence down for teens? Locking them up. 
those who got guns and we catch them with guns, we're going to lock them up. We're going to charge them with adults. You know, the positive stuff we're doing is through our summer camps. We got summer camps all summer. You can have your young, young, young child go to a camp every week this summer. That we got them throughout Richland County and the schools. Got all kind of different camps: sports camp, character camp, science camps, different camps. We're doing stuff like that. We're doing our part. People need to stop putting this on us. We're doing our part. Where's the, where's the parents at, and where's the community at? Where's the churches? Where's the schools? Everybody else has got to step up, too. All right, we stepped our game up. Our game stays high all the time because this is a constant thing we're working on. Where's everybody else at? Where were all these parents at when all this was going on? There wasn't one parent there except those who lived in that community. Do we know how many um, in total were out there and maybe the motive is? Yeah. Uh, we know the motive, but I'm not going to discuss that. And, um, Estimate 70 to 100 kids. And again, from information we got, very few of them actually live there. Neighbors in that neighborhood are concerned about their safety due to this, like you said, being the second shooting that's happened at that pool. Do you believe that um, that neighborhood should add additional security measures? Yeah, every neighborhood should. Have. One, we've talked to the management, and the pool is closed. That pool is closed. So you're not going to have them there, but that's, that's yeah. Every community needs to have cameras. That community, every community needs to have cameras. Um, and they need to form a homeowner's group that is very active, that looks out for each other. You know, when, they, when people who live there saw this many kids congregating at their pool and knowing they don't live there, there should have been 100 911 calls made to the Sheriff's Department. You know, let us respond and take care of it. Some states are pushing to have penalties for parents who have kids that involve themselves in gun violence. Do you think that's something our state should be moving forward to? I wish we would. You know, at, at some point we're going to have to hold parents responsible for what their kids are doing. Again, I, I said earlier, go search your room right now. Go search your car. Go find their guns. That's what you need to do as a parent. There ain't no privacy in their house. They didn't pay for that house. So... You know, why, why are the parents missing this? Why aren't they finding the guns? Uh, are they condoning what's going on? All right, thank you all.